Thank you, Camille. Okay, hello everybody. So, as you can guess from the title, today we'll speak about priority effects in grassland ecosystems. Um, the first thing I would like to say and start with this presentation is to say that both the order and the timing of plant species arrival in a system can influence plant community assembly, and I would like to show you an example of that. So you can consider here two different scenarios. Uh, first scenario where you have graces arriving before legumine species, and the, second scenari and the second scenario where you have the opposite, the legume species arriving before the graces. The, depending on the order and the timing of arrival of this different functional group, but also depending on the biotic and abiotic conditions uh, in which these plant-plant interactions take place, you can end up with two very different communities at the end, showing very, diff showing very different properties in terms of structure, so plant species composition and, and relative ab uh, abundance, but also in terms of ecosystem functions, like biomass production, for instance. And in Vicky Temperton's lab, we are very interested in a particular type of priority effect that can have strong implications for ecological restoration, because we do not manipulate the order of arrival of particular plant species, we manipulate the order of arrival of plant functional groups at the, uh, in grasslands. And we work mainly with three uh, functional groups. The first one are graces, so mainly uh, plant species from the Poitsee family, uh, nitrogen fixing forbs that I would refer to as legumes in this presentation that are uh, forbs able to fix nitrogen, um, nitrogen from the atmosphere and uh, non-nitrogen fixing forbs that I will refer as forbs here uh, during this presentation. So in order to explore the, how this priority and diversity effects uh, affect um, plant community structure and uh, ecosystem functioning in grasslands, uh, we set up a field experiment in uh, in Ulich from 2012 and 2015, and this experiment was mainly set up by these three persons here: so v Vicky Temperton, Emanuela Weidlich, and Philipp uh, von Gilausen, that used to work in uh, in Ulich in IBG2. Um, this uh, experiment has the following uh, design: so uh, we explored, we manipulated, we had three experimental treatments. The first treatment was the plant functional group order of arrival, and we had four different possibilities for this treatment. Either the functional groups uh, arrived all at the same time, it was kind of a control, or one functional group arrived five weeks before the other, and you have, for example, legume first plots where legumes arrive before the forbs and the graces. You also had four first plots and graces first uh, plots. Uh, this functional group uh, order of arrival treatment was crossed with uh, species richness treatment because plots, uh, we had plots with high and low diversity. And these different combinations were replicated in two different soil types, um, namely area A and B, area B being a bit more nutrient rich than, uh, than area A. Um, in this experiment, we were very interested in root dynamics and we really wanted to know if the experimental treatments affected um, below ground productivity in terms of root productivity. And to answer this question, we did two things. We uh, collected soil cores from the field to measure the standing root left density in the top soil region uh, of the plots. And we also measure final productivity using the in-growth core methods to follow final productivity over time. What did we find? When you look here, you have a, a, a graph showing the um, the effect of plant functional group order of arrival over time on the total ab above ground productivity of the system. And you can see that the order of arrival of different functional groups clearly affected the above ground productivity. On the first year, you had mainly uh, synchronous and legume first plots that were the most productive ones, with Gracie's first plots being the least productive ones. In 2013, this priority effect disappeared. That means that the productivity was quite similar for all experimental treatments. But in 2014, this priority effect reappeared in one uh, area only, in area B, with legume first plot being much more productive than the others, which can be expected because when you saw legume first, you can expect nitrogen facilitation to happen. 
When you look at what's happening below ground, this is very interesting because the pattern is very different. Uh, very different. This is the data for the uh, standing root length density in the topsoil region. And in 2012, you can see that uh, Grace's first uh, communities were the most productive below ground, which was the opposite above ground. And this priority effect strengthened over time. And when we look at the result for, in, uh, for 2014, legume first plots this time were the least productive below ground, which was the opposite above ground. Above ground, when you saw legume first, you have more biomass production above ground, but less biomass production below ground, especially in the top soil. And this priority effect pattern strengthened over time, um, despite the fact that the plant community structure massively changed from 2012 to 2014. In 2012, synchronous and legume first plots, they were mainly dominated by legumes, this white part you can see in the graph here, and graces first plots, they were mainly dominated by graces. But in 2014, all plots were massively dominated by graces, and despite that, you, clear, you still see a clear priority effect signal with legume first plots being uh, less productive uh, below ground. When you look at the result for the fine root productivity uh, measured with the ingrowth core method, we didn't find any evidence to support that the order of arrival of plant functional group um, affect fine root productivity. In fact, we just found for the first year an effect of the soil type on fine root productivity, uh, where uh, the productivity of the fine roots wa was lower in area B, which was uh, more nutrient rich. So this can be expected. Now let's make a trip together. Let's move from Jülich to Lüneburg in North Germany, where I'm uh, currently doing uh, my, my postdoc. In Lüneburg, you can have this type of landscape. So you have um, what we call here dry, a dry acid grassland, uh, characterized by a very uh, nutrient poor and, and sandy soil. And when you look at the species present in these grasslands, you have a lot of them, but they are mainly um, forb dominated. Uh, they are mainly dominated by non nitrogen fixing forbs. You still have a few leguminous species like Trifolium arvense, for example, and a few graces, but you mainly find forbs in the, in the system. So they are quite different from the grasslands that we studied in Jülich, that were more mesic grasslands um, <coughs> in Jülich. And when uh, I arrived in Lüneburg, we set up a mesocosm experiment this time to see if we can uh, find the same pattern as we, were found, uh, we found in Jülich for dry stick grasslands. In this mesocosm experiment, we manipulated again the functional group order of arrival uh, using exactly the same levels as the one used uh, in Ulic, but the species were obviously different. And you also had a sound diversity treatment where mesocosm had two different diversity levels, a high or a low diversity one. And all the treatments were, uh, all these um, factors were crossed for each other, to each other. Um, this experiment will lasted for a bit more than one year. We set up the experiment in May 2016, and uh, uh, at this date we did the first sowing. That means we just sowed the functional group that was supposed to arrive first in the system, and three months later we sowed the functional group, uh, the rest of the functional group, that the, so the ones that are supposed to arrive later in the system. And 11 months after the second sowing, we harvested the experiment. What did we do at Harvest? We did two things. The first thing, we collected the above ground biomass per species so that we can measure the contribution uh, of different species to above ground biomass production, but we also collected soil cores to measure uh, below ground productivity in the top soil of the mesocosm. What did you find? Let's have a look at the above ground productivity of the mesocosm. You can see this time a strong interaction between the sound diversity and the plant functional group order of arrival treatments. When you look at the high diversity treatments, um, Grace's first mesocosms, mesocosms were, again, the least productive in comparison with the others. That's, uh, that's a result that was quite similar to uh, the one that we found in Ulic for mesic grasslands. But when you look at the low diversity treatments, we had a very, very co a completely different pattern with Forb first and Grace's first communities, this time being the most uh, productive ones. Um, is this pattern also formed below ground? The answer is uh, no, because we have still an effect of uh, plant functional group order of arrival. But very interestingly, we didn't find any effect of the species richness on the outcome. That means when you look at the every level of the uh, order of arrival treatment here, 
the uh, gray line here is for the low diversity pots and the uh, black bars here are for the high diversity pots and for each uh, order of arrival we have a very similar uh, below ground productivity what is interesting is the result for the order of arrival treatment because this time grace's first communities were by far the most productive below ground which is again contrast contrast with what we found above ground they were then followed by legume first communities and uh, four first communities which are the least productive uh, below ground and synchronous plots were pots were kind of in between between these different treatments so some take-home messages uh, for this presentation both plant functional group order of arrival and sound diversity are very important drivers of uh, productivity and community assembly in both drastic grasslands and mesi grasslands and priority effects seem to have very contrasting effect above and below ground and this is, this is something we would like to dig more into the in the next uh, couple of years um, and we mainly so show that sowing forbs or legume first can reduce uh, below ground productivity at least in the topsoil region and that's something that we would like to investigate next we would because when you take soil cores in the field you take finally a snapshot of root productivity at a given time point at a very uh, particular uh, location in space. Thank you, Camilla. Um, so we did a rise box experiment to see if this result can be explained by a modification of vertical root distribution um, uh, in grasslands. So we did uh, set up a rise box experiment where we manipulated the order of arrival of different plant functional group and we took images at regular time point and we end up with this type of, uh, of the da data to analyze if this experimental treatment affects vertical root distribution. These are, um, we still have a lot of root images to analyze and it's something we would like uh, that we are very excited about. And we also would like to test uh, what you call an allelopathy hypothesis because something I didn't tell you is that in the mesocosm experiment that we did, when you saw, we saw the four first, we had at the end of experiment barely no graces at all. But when you saw graces first, the opposite is also true because we didn't find, we didn't have any forbs at the end of experiment in the, in, in, in the pots, despite the fact that they were sown in it. And so we would like to test, or, or we believe that asymmetric competition would have played a role, of course, but we also would like to test if the chemicals present in the soil solution, when plants arrive later in a community, can also play a role in plant growth establishment and root system architecture. This is an experiment in, in, in progress, but this is something we would like to investigate in the, in the next couple of months. So, uh, last slide is to thank, all, of course, all the people that uh, work um, and did the experiment in, in, in Ulich. Uh, especially a big thank you to Emanuela Weidlich that did most of his PhD on that topic. Uh, thank you also to our uh, technician, Thomas Nemer, for his very good support. And also many thanks for an army of students that help us uh, washing roots coming from the field. Yeah, they look quite happy here. I just took the, the picture, I had a good time. <laughs> um, and I uh, also would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>